In the roll forming process, a strip of metal is fed through a series of mated roll dies that are installed onto the shafts of a mill's forming stands. If component preforming is required, your manufacturer needs a punch press or other equipment. Some features are better introduced prior to forming, while others can be handled after forming. If the component is being produced from coiled strips, the roll form line will typically include a cutoff press or saw. The ability of the roll form line, the coil feeder and pre-punched equipment, roll form machine, and cutoff equipment, to handle your component design depends upon many factors. If we look simply at the profile of the component design only, the key factors include material thickness, Material type Profile size Profile complexity Let's look at some of the typical design characteristics of a roll form machine. The fit between the component design and the ability of a roll form machine to form your component are linked to these characteristics. Roll shaft diameter Roll shaft space Roll shaft spacing Number of forming stations Cut-off equipment. Cold roll forming is a process of forming metal from the sheet, strip, or coiled stock into shapes of essentially uniform cross sections by feeding the strips through successive pairs of rolls arranged in tandem. The deformation in cold roll forming is quite complex, and due to this inherent complexity of the process, the roll design and other decision making often involve a good deal of trial and error. Cold roll forming process design is usually called roll design. The section profile of the demonstrated product is divided into two major segments, the center rib, and the chambers, for the purpose of bending angle control. 
cold forming machine feeding by sheet metal from decoiler then start to forming step by step, stand by stand. Each tooling stand has duty for a specific amount of changing shape on the raw material. The most noteworthy point is roll forming machine works quietly without any popping or wrinkling. The furthermore final profile should be without any distortion, crimp as well as misalignment. All roll forming roller parts should design by experienced professional engineering with well known software to get the final standard result. Design Process Overview For each new tooling requirement, the designer should use the following steps. Develop a cross-sectional drawing. Calculate the estimated strip width. Produce a bent progression or flower. Lay out and design the roll forming tooling around the flower. Incorporate fixtures, guides, side rolls, and straightening devices where applicable. After the cross-section has been finalized, and before the rolls can be designed, the proper number of passes and rolling mill must be determined. Calculating the estimated strip width Probably the most common problem associated with designing roll forming tooling is predicting how a forming bend will react during the rolling process. When calculating strip widths and designing rolls, the maximum thickness within the gauge range is generally used. This is done to eliminate interference between the male and female rolls when the material is passing through. Flower development, after the estimated strip width is calculated, the flower can now be developed by using the arc and straight lengths. When developing the flower the designer must consider the correct number of passes. This 10 pass example should be okay if running non notched, post cut mild steel. If the section is either notched, pre cut or high strength material, more passes would be necessary to achieve desired results. Additional passes allow the material to flow through the mill with less strain. This is a must, especially for pre-cut blanks. The pre-cut lengths must self-feed through every pass without damaging the lead edge of the strip. A good rule of thumb is to try to design or roll passes to self-feed even when running coil stock. The mill operator should not have to feed a new coil and pry the section into the next pass. Roll Layout After the flower has been completed, the designer needs to choose drive diameters and check for maximum flange roll sizes and possible interference with the rolling mill.